This video is sponsored by Rapid Direct. More about them later. Hey guys, Logan here, and yes, you guessed it, we are working on building a race engine from scratch. Now, the first thing on today's list is the crankcases, which are currently Suzuki ones. I do plan on making my own in the future, just uh, want to avoid that for as long as possible. <laughs> so those of you who are observant would have noticed in previous videos that this crankcase is actually broken. So when we erase these, we're pretty hard on them. And yeah, a common problem is they snap this bearing retainer off the crankcase, which is a bit of an issue. So first things first, I'm gonna fix that up. I'm just gonna remove this bearing out of this other set of cases, which aren't quite buggered yet. And then I'll know bearing installation depth. There we are, that is bolted down tighter than a nun's And yes, yeah, so I'm gonna zero on this machine surface and then I can uh, figure out how much meter I'm gonna take off to get that down to the right height so we can fit a bearing retainer. Right, so that surface now is ready for the bearing retainer, which brings us onto today's sponsor, Rapid Direct. Now, this is the same company that I got to make this guillotine throttle body for me. Uh, they are certainly experts in their field and pretty darn good at what they do. So let's have a look what we got. Pretty straightforward. It's three bolts, it's a bearing retainer. I got them to do a couple of different colors. Uh, so we've got anodized black, we've got plain aluminium. And of course, anodized orange, my favorite. And yeah, so let's go see how these fit on the crankcase. <whistles> Would you look at that? Very, very happy. So yeah, just designed it to go with the casting uh, holes that were already there. Just got to drill and tap them through and then bolt that on and our bearing retainer is good to go. But I did get them to make one more thing which is bloody cool, so have a look at this. Now what I got them to make combines a woman's best friend which is diamonds and my best friend which is titanium. <laughs> and yeah, you're not going to guess what it is so I'll show you. Titanium is one of the best materials when it comes to race bikes. It is incredibly light, is really good for anything that moves or anything that needs to be strong because it's as strong as steel and pretty much half the weight. Now what I got them to make is a selector fork shaft. So the selector fork in the gearbox slides back and forth is controlled by the selector drum. Now the original ones in this engine are made of solid steel and they're very heavy. So I thought I'm going to make them out of titanium but the problem is titanium Oh man, it's not very good at being slippery. So hardened steel like this, you can case harden it and it will, with oil on it, it will slide for a very long time. It'll wear very well. Now titanium won't, traditionally. So that's where diamonds come in. So this uh, has a coating on it called DLC, which is called diamond-like carbon. It's almost as hard as diamond, which is really hard and it also has the lubricating properties of graphite. Now that's like a win-win, that's like the best case scenario. Graphite is an amazing lubricant and diamond is incredibly hard, very hard wearing. If you want to get your own diamond-like carbon coated titanium parts like this made, it is a very easy process. All you gotta do is upload your step file to Rapid Direct's website. Then you just select the process, the material, the finishings and coatings, the roughness, and lastly, how many you want. And they'll get back to you with an instant quote. Once again, a massive thank you to Rapid Direct for sponsoring the video and making these amazing parts. And if you want a discount on your first order off them, there is a discount code down below. Now let's get back to machining. In hindsight, I really should have just removed that clamp. It would have made tapping this hole way easier. Just bolted on the new bearing retainer after tapping the last threads and I am super happy with it. It has turned out amazing and looks better than new. And so next on the list is the crankshaft balance weights, which I sort of haven't put much thought into at the moment. Um, and so yeah, I think I got a plan. I'm probably gonna use the lathe and actually using this as the jig to bolt them to so I can machine the outside of them and get them nice and concentric to the main bearings. So let's uh, go find some steel.
Oh, I don't know, that's looking pretty hot. It might be time for a new insert. Yeah, it's, it's definitely time for a new insert. Oh yeah, that's more like it. It's cutting like a hot knife through butter now. And just square up the vice quickly. Back from the initial machining on our first balance weight and so far so good. Uh, the dowel and everything lines up as it should. Uh, there's a couple things I need to sort. It's actually a smidge too tall so when the, the piston is actually on the con rod it's uh, hitting here and that's not going to help it spin whatsoever. So I need to sort that and then I need to put the final profile in it which is the same as that crank so that it's not going to interfere with anything else. Now the only other thing I'm a little bit concerned with is the bolts, um, the threads in particular in the crankshaft is what I'm worried about. So these ones here for example have an awful lot of slop in them. So I want to make these threads as strong as humanly possible. So either I need to go to a tighter tap which I think is like an H4 tolerance or I go to maybe a roll form tap which will inherently make the thread stronger. I'm not sure which one is better. So um, if you're an engineer and this is your thing, uh, definitely let me know, that'd be very much appreciated. So let's uh, get back to machining this. Bit of faffing around, I've now got it uh, shortened and countersunk so it bolts onto the crank. Now I'm thinking for the real thing, I'm actually going to want uh, hollow dowels on the two bolt holes as well so it's got three because the one center one which we solid is enough to you know stop it trying to move this way um, and give it a good alignment but I'm not confident that um, the two bolts will be enough to stop it twisting because I can imagine this spinning around at a high RPM and it just needs to twist slightly and either the end of it's going to touch the rod or it's going to touch the crankcase and she's all over Rover, we don't want that. So I'll have to change the design a little bit to accommodate some hollow dowels on there. But yeah, we're sort of running out of meat, I don't want to bloody, don't want to make it too thin, that's for sure. Right, she's bolted in there as tight as I can get it, copper soft jewels on that surface, centre in there, and yeah, I'm just going to take light cuts and turn this down until it's round, but yeah, it feels not too bad, it seems to spin not too bad, not too much vibration, so we'll just see how we go. Just going to give it a quick wee debur before I take it out of the lathe. Last but not least, debur in these two countersunks. And just like that, our crank now clears the piston. Now, it's not by much. <laughs> the clearance is about uh, one to one and a half mil, which uh, I think is enough. Didn't turn out too bad. I did learn a couple of things off this one. Uh, the countersunks need to be a bit deeper because there's not much meat left in them. And I would kind of like these to go all the way to flush as well. So I thought with what I've learned, I'll whip up another weight. And here we are, we have our second weight, this one turned out a lot better, very happy with this one, and this goes on the other side, like so. Now I'm going to bolt these on, and we can sort of have a play around with the balance factor. There we are, that is starting to look like a crankshaft. Now, 
the actual crank uh, these will both be symmetrical <laughs> there won't be uh, the discrepancy between the two and I'm pretty sure as far as profile I'll do you a tiny quick sketch right so the trailing edge will be like so it'll be uh, tapered like you know an airplane wing and then the leading edge of the crank will be yeah nice and curved like the, the front of a raindrop now this is a truing stand which i use for truing up crank shafts once they've been pressed together and i'm going to use this to work out our balance factor but as you can see it does have a bit of weight to it so i think it may actually be too heavy but we'll just have to figure that out using some maths so first i'm going to weigh just the end of the rod 45 grams now we're going to weigh the piston and the gudgeon pin and the end of the rod 224 grams next we're going to put the crank on the truing stand and work out how much weight we've got to hang off the con rod in order to balance it so i've got to hang some weight off there so we get it so it doesn't spin in any position All right, so after a bit of faffing around out of focus, uh, here we are, and this feels pretty balanced. I can move it to all the positions, and yeah, this is the amount of weight it requires, which is actually a reasonable amount, which is telling me that these balance weights are actually too heavy, which is actually a really good thing, which means I can just make them out of normal steel, and I don't have to make them out of tungsten. Um, because that was my original plan which yeah that just would have been a pain in the ass and a lot more cost for for no reason really so now I'm going to take all this stuff off chuck it on the scales again so that's a fair bit of steel 400 grams exactly now I'll do some maths so we need the balance factor is the rod plus hung so 445 divided by rod and piston which is 224 well i don't even have to do the mass that's a lot <laughs> so that's currently 200 percent balance factor instead of um i'm not actually sure okay i'm gonna quickly do the same maths on this crank and work out what the original balance factor is but i can almost guarantee it's not 200 percent all right so i just worked out the balance factor of the stock crank it's roughly 57 percent give or take a couple percent um and yeah my crank is 200 percent balance factor so this uh, these balance weights are way too heavy yeah i imagine suzuki know their stuff they've been building engines for a while so yeah that 57 percent balance factor is probably pretty spot on for what i need because yeah racing these engines already they don't really vibrate much they're pretty good so yeah if i aim for yeah around 60 percent balance factor i think we'll be pretty safe so i'm gonna have a quick go at profiling this weight and see what it looks like After a bit of elbow grease, this side of the crank weight is looking pretty darn spiffy. I did run out of elbow grease, so I have not done the other side or the top or the bottom. Uh, but yes, yeah, so this is pretty much what the finished ones are going to look like. Nice and rounded on the front, and the trailing edge is going to be to a point. They're going to be polished, mirror finish, all edges of it, um, or super finished or, or whatnot. And I don't know if it's going to help horsepower, but it's going to look really cool which is what's important right so i think that's going to about do it for today's video a uh, massive thank you again to rapid direct for those amazing parts i've made made these crankcases usable again and yeah those diamond like carbon coated titanium shift rods they are just amazing and yeah looking forward to putting them into the engine and on that note this has been logan from the motorcycle forge i hope you enjoyed and i'll catch you next time